Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about lines of code. So let's get into it. So today I got the question, Frederick, is it true that a function should be no more than five lines of code? Because this, apparently a senior developer had told this person this. And this is, uh, yeah. I um I I just, I I would I would pay money to be able to ask the the senior this question where how did you come up with the the line the the like that number 5 how did 5 how, why, why did you come up with 5 specifically five? why not 3 or 6 or 12 and a half why 5 Guys, if somebody gives you a line number or like a, a number, like a, just a magical number that you should always abide by, really start to question that sort of thing. Because any person who writes software will know that the size of a function cannot be, it, it, there's no magical, like, there's no magic to it. I, it used to be that the character, the standard for the character width should be 80 characters because of the size screen and the, scre and the scre and screen size so that everything fit nicely on the line, uh, on, on one line when you were writing code right. But that's, that some argue today that it should be 120 characters. That these arbitrary numbers, guys, they are usually rooted in some preference or some pseudo-logical decision that people make but that doesn't mean that there's like that they're like a law of the universe like if someone tells you that it should be no more than five lines i will hope that this what this person is actually trying to say is that keeping your functions small is a useful thing but i will make an argument and i will ma make an argument in basically based on this idea and i think that that is uh, the, the idea that i want to base this argument is, is basically that you have a reading flow when you read code so when you're starting to just go through a function of some sort there is a natural read to it when it's well designed because you're in you're, you think of it as you start a thought process in the person that is reading and that thought process is very important because that's that bubble that we are building up in our head so we can th we programmers we can think about okay these are all the things that are going to happen in the execution of this function this is the exact is in like this is what we're doing when we're trying to f understand code and how to debug it and all of this stuff that thought process is the most important thing now the question isn't how many in my world how many lines should this function be the question is where is, just as you're reading a book, where is the natural stopping point? Or wh where is the, how can I smoothen out that thought process as much as humanly possible? Sometimes it's better to have a function that is a little bit longer because it's, very, it's much easier for comprehension to just think of it in these, these steps. But if you start to like break out certain parts of the of the uh, of the logic here and create uh, bigger abstractions then the steps might become convoluted it might be harder for you to figure out these are the things that needs to happen it's a classic problem where you might have a really 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 big function and then you just kind of all right i just want I, you don't want to you want to create an abstraction to get rid of the lines of code but it may not be a good fit like it may not make semantic uh, it may be like that that function needs to be expressed that Oh, gets things from the database and synchronizes things at the same time that it handles a race condition. Like it becomes this unelegant read for the person who's consuming your code. And that's the thing that I think that should dictate how many lines of code that you have. Sometimes a function should just be one line. Because uh, as an example, it might be that you have a very con a, a condition and if else somewhere. And the condition is very convoluted. There's a lot of oring and anding and so forth with a lot of different parameters. Then it's much simpler for you to just create a one line function that says is true or is false, like well, is correct thing or is incorrect thing. And create that abstraction because it becomes easier for the reader to see, oh, this function just checks if this condition is true, rather than try to go through all of these different conditions that make up the decision whether or not something is true or something is going to be false. 
and having that it's almost like a sixth sense I've seen, I think I honestly believe that it is very similar to being a good writer when you're writing a book or a letter or anything like that to really have that sense like to know like where is a good segment to like what's a good sh chunk of text what's a good sentence what is a good breakpoint here so that you get some mental relief and you can start looking at the next thing and so forth sentence structures and so forth you can think of it as a, as a in my world as a very similar thing because when you're writing code it's much more efficient to think about the comprehension of the code and the person who's going to read it after you than it is to abide by blindly to some rule that states that it should be five lines maybe it should be five, five lines of code in a specific function and in another it could be one in a, in a third it could be 12 it could be 20 lines depending on how easy how, how smoothly the function is going to be read once you have those lines of code it's like stating how long should a song be it depends on the song so what I want you to take away from this is that I don't believe that there is such a thing as a magic number for how many lines of code a function should have. So if somebody's telling you it should be five lines, I hope that they're just suggesting that that's a good rule of thumb because of learnings. Don't treat that as some universal truth because there is no universal truth to uh, because then every single function would be five lines of code and they're not. I know for a fact that they are not. So. I think that instead of having some like really die hard rule like that, it's much more efficient to think about things such as, all right, when I'm reading through this code, how easy is it for me to just understand the steps? It's almost, you can almost think of it as creating a to-do list, like a, a checklist. Okay, these are the things that are gonna happen in my function. How easy it is for me, is it for me to just understand all the steps that are gonna take place without having to think too, like, too hard about, or like, without having to think too hard on the exact implementation. That's a us usually for me a very efficient way to uh, figure out if my function is too big or if it's too small. And over time these things become like they come become ingrained in you. You it becomes a backbone thing. You just don't think about it, it just naturally happens. Have a great day.